Hello people, now we have reached hernia treatment, okay? Before the surgery, what are they talking about? So, uh, you should uh, treat the cause, like if the person has bronchi uh, bronchitis, chronic bronchitis or asthma, because of which they are coughing a lot, isn't it? So, you should treat them with bronchodilators, antibiotics, mucolytic agents. You should ask them to stop smoking, because smoking will cause collagen problem, right? And you may have to consider prostate prostatectomy okay uh, before the repair of hernia if the person has uh, prostatic hypertrophy if the prostate has increased in size you may have to consider a prostatectomy before considering repair of hernia if the person is complaining of constipation etc you should check for carcinoma of the colon right you'll have to do colonoscopy sigmoidoscopy etc and then only you will treat the hernia then if the person has difficulty passing urine because of which he is uh, straining himself right that means he could have a stricture urethra so that is when you will have to <clears throat> you will have to check for stricture urethra so basically before going for treatment of the hernia they want to fix the cause this much you have understood so people let's get started with the actual treatment of the hernia so basically you have guys in the treatment of hernia what and all other options you have mostly here they're talking about inguinal hernia guys herniotomy herniorraphy hernioplasty are the three key operations for inguinal hernia so, hernia tomi means what? So, if this is the sac, isn't it? And in this, there is some content. They will just push back this content and remove this part of the sac and just stick it, stitch it up, right? So, did you understand, guys? So, this is hernia tomi. So, excision of the sac alone, you will do if the patients are young. Actually, they are saying about children. So, here they are saying that the hernia is because of the sac, right? Because of the sac, the hernia is happening. Just remove the sac and you will be fine kind of thing. So, that becomes a hernia tomi. Now, let's go to hernia raft. So, in hernia raffi, what you are doing? You are doing the same hernia tomi plus you are reconstructing the inguinal floor. Okay, with what? There is some information here. Yes, with sutures you will repair. Okay, what will you repair? The, uh, you will reconstruct the inguinal floor. So, here there are two types guys, Bessonese and Shoulders repair. So, what you should know is today what is done is modified Bessonese repair. Okay, I thought Shoulders is better than Bessonese. But is it better than modified Bessonese? Let's check. So, they are going to do herniotomy. Yes, suturing, we told you, right? Then what is this? So, here very clearly you can see the sutures, right? They are trying to reconstruct the floor, isn't it? Inguinal floor, they are trying to reconstruct. So, this is the Bessonese herniorraphy. You can look at the details in this, guys. Here they are saying, what is the criticism of Bessonese? It is repair with tension. There is a repair with tension. The conjoint tendon and the inguinal ligament approximation is not physiological. So, you are trying to put sutures and bring, in, bring them together. Something like that is not physiological. Okay, whatever you look now, now is the modified original. What was there? Looks like they are talking about um, internal oblique transverse, abdominis, transverse fascia, some triple layer, inguinal ligament, double layer. So many layers, layers. Okay. So whatever you looked at in uh, this, uh, what was this? What was the first one we looked at, guys? Bessonese repair. So, they talked about some double layer, triple layer, etc. Now, let's go to shoulders. Shoulders is actually four layer. Yes, uh, so the shoulder repair, what they are telling you is, uh, see, uh, this is tensionless method, okay. Shoulders repair is tensionless four layer method. So, here itself they are telling you first layer, second layer, third layer. The first layer is actually double breasted, that is transverse hallucination. Second layer is um, where, where they are talking about um, conjoint tendon, is it? Third layer, they are talking about external oblique aponeurosis okay let's look at this see here the four layers that they're talking about conjoint tendon fascia transversalis and the external oblique aponeurosis okay so here the first one is saying fascia transversalis this is double breasted okay double breasted so they are doing like this something like this so double breasted then you have the conjoint tendon which is the second something right and the third they're talking about external oblique so these three but actually two layers of this fascia transverse alice nice so it becomes four layered okay yes did you understand what are we looking at we're looking at shoulders repair look at this so the first layer transverse alice fascia upper and lower flap sutured in double breasting manner by using non-absorbable sutures okay second layer is like bessonese where the conjoint tendon is sutured to the inguinal ligament so, Bessonese is where you are joining conjoint tendon to the inguinal ligament using uh, non-absorbable sutures. Okay. Then the third layer is completed by suturing upper flap of external oblique aponeurosis to the inguinal ligament. The results have been good in shoulders hands. Okay. So, guys, Bessonese was that uh, double layer, uh, some two layer, three layer, but they don't like this. Then you have the modified Bessonese, some 
extra things they spoke about. Shoulders where they have four layer, I think they have six layer also where all the three of them will be a double breasted kind of a thing. So a lot of varieties are there guys. Now let us go to, uh, what did you look at initially? Hernio Tomi where you just repaired this, uh, you know, remove the sack. Hernio Raffi you looked at, now that Bessonis and Shoulders, right? Then let's go to Hernio Plasti. Hernio Plasti is where you have this Lichen, Lichen Steen repair, isn't it? Here they use mesh guys, that's it, okay? So this is mesh repair and they have something like darning, is it? There are two types of hernioplasties which are commonly practiced, mesh repair and darning. Let's look at this. So lichen, lichen steen repair, okay? Lichen steen repair. So you're using some uh, mesh, okay? Okay, this is lichen steen repair, guys. Look at this. They have put a mesh here. You can see how the mesh is attached here. Are you able to see, guys? Let me use a better color for you, see? Which color would be good? Okay, see here, this, uh, they have fixed it here and here, what they have done, the mesh, whichever goes like this, they have cut it, they have, this mesh was like this, here they have cut it and they have crossed it. So you can see it has become cross here, right? Can you see? Here it has become cross. They have cut it in the middle, the mesh and they have crossed it. Here the same mesh is attached here, right? So this is light ten steam repair. So what is the characteristic of this ideal mesh in this Lichenstein repair? So biocompatibility, it should not do any harm. It should be chemically and physically inert. It should not react, isn't it? Risk of infection should not be there. Handling should be good. Socioeconomics, economical, it should be. And then it should last long, okay? Just look at a few other points on this uh, Lichenstein repair, guys. Look at this. Uh, propylene, polypropylene mesh. What mesh are you using? Polypropylene mesh, PP mesh. You're using polypropylene Oh, you can PPP, you can say polypropylene a mesh. Okay, anyways, mesh you're using. The mesh is tailored according to the patient's requirement, how much of a size looks like. Preparation of the mesh, how will you prepare the mesh? The corners have to be cut out as to give a round shape. I think they don't want any sharp edges or something, is it? The corners you have to cut it out, so you'll get a round shape. The slit is given on the lateral border of the mesh at the junction of the lower one-third and the upper two-thirds to allow spermatic cord to pass through. That is exactly what we said. So let's say there's a round mesh now. A slit is giving, given on the lateral border. This is lateral, this is medial. On the lateral border of the mesh at the junction of the lower one-third and the upper two-third, you will give a slit here. Lower one-third and upper two-third means if this is the round mesh here, somewhere here you will give a split, right? And the two tails are overlapped, right? The two tails are overlapped. Why? Because you want to allow the spermatic cord to pass through. How will you suture? You will take this mesh, okay, the medially the mesh overlaps the pu pu uh, pubic tubercle. If this is pubic tubercle, it overlaps. But I think they're talking about the uh, where you, exactly you fix it. You avoid the pubic bone, okay, because you want to prevent ostitis pubis. You have to avoid the pubic bone, right? You will just suture it over the tissue of the pubis, uh, sim uh, of the symphysis. See here, you suture it over the tissue of symphysis. You avoid the pubic bone, okay, guys. And laterally, the two tails are placed beyond the deep ring. So if this is the deep ring, the two ends are placed beyond the deep ring, right, and sutured. In, inferiorly, it is sutured to the inguinal and lacunar ligaments. So inferiorly, you're suturing it to the inguinal and the lacunar ligaments and superiorly to the conjoint tendon, okay? So this is your Lichenstein repair. Now let us look at the photo here. This is the Lichenstein repair, the most popular of open hernia repair. Advantages of this polypropylene mesh are that, um, can I highlight this? Okay, polypropylene mesh is having high tensile strength, it's biocompatible, it's uh, biocompatible, it's non-absorbable, so it will be there for a long time. Monofilament, strong, elastic, transparent mesh, it's transparent, okay, it's elastic, it's transparent, it's strong, it's porosity is for high visibility, colonization. Colonization is a good word, is it? Yeah. Okay, guys, focus strong mechanical and reinforcement. It will give nice strength, looks like, so the, uh, the contents cannot herniate again, right? Kind of a thing. Encourages rapid growth of connective tissue. It encourages rapid growth of connective tissue. It's cheap. It's flexible for any anatomic repair. So what are we talking about, guys, here? Here we are talking about, um, how do I come back to the normal thing? Okay. We are talking about polypropylene mesh, polypropylene mesh, PPM, they are calling it as posi here, polypropylene mesh. Let's look at a photo from this textbook here. They are talking about the Lichenstein repair, the pro proline mesh repair, polypropylene 
mesh repair, isn't it? So here you have the proline mesh. They're talking about proline mesh. Is it another type of mesh or what? So here you have the spermatic cord. Here they did not show that overlap. So people in hernio plasty, there are two types. We said you can use mesh or you can use darning. You know what darning is? We used to earlier, if there's a hole in the dress, we used to give it for darning. Now I don't know if people do. Anyways, proline nylon darning. Here what you will do, you will suture the conjoint tendon to the inguinal ligament without tension in crisscross manner using proline suture material. Exactly. Wow. This is so, so much sense. You know, in Bessonese, you were using sutures and you were bringing them together. You were trying to approximate this uh, conjoint tendon and the inguinal uh, ligament. You were trying to bring them together with suture. But here they are not doing that. What they are doing is, they are using the proline suture material and they are making a mesh. They themselves are making a mesh. So, this is what is called as darning. You used to have a, te a tear in a jean span before. You know, they, you give it for darning. They will just put some threads like this. And they will create a cloth like in between. So, this is darning. Okay. So, that's what they are talking about here. So, this is the other way of doing hernioplasty. Okay. So, great guys. We looked at all the three things. Herniotomy, herniorraphy, hernioplasty. Look at this photo. They are showing how they are doing the darning. Proline darning. Conjoint tendon and the inguinal ligament. They are only handmade mesh they are making. Okay. Biological mesh means what? Sterilized sheets of connective tissue derived from human or animal dermis or procene intestinal submucosa. This is some biological mesh. Okay. So, is it like um, there is some advantage and some disadvantage? What is this? Focus, guys. Looks like instead of buying all those polypropylene mesh and all, you can use some biological mesh, you know, which is more like derived from human or animal dermis. So, it is a sheet of connective tissue derived from human or animal dermis, which is sterilized. So, what they will do here, they will use it in the presence of infection, and these are very expensive because they are biological. And um, they are, they are, the in you know foreign body reaction and all is very uncommon because it is of human origin or animal origin, right? So it is more, uh, a, what do you say, uh, accepted by the body. What do you say, guys? But it is costly. So people, there are still some other surgeries that are done for hernia. Look at this, some Kuntz operation. We are not looking at that. Then they are talking about some. Andrews imbrication, McQuay, Nihus repair, Stopas repair, Marcy's repair. Some new developments are there, they are saying. Anyways, so now let us uh, look at the complications of hernia surgery. What happens if you have a hernia surgery? Focus guys, let us look at the complications of the surgery. So basically the complications are there could be recurrence, there could be a hematoma, ischemic orchitis, thrombosis of venous plexus, osteitis, pubis. We told you by the mesh where you should place, right? You should place it in the tissue. Right, um, a mesh related contractions, erosion, infection. So, mesh related problems also can be there. These are some uh, complications of hernia surgery. You can injure the iliac vessels, remember, during hernia surgery. There could be injury to the urinary bladder. There can be pain or bleeding. That's written here. You can see pain, bleeding. Urinary retention is common, abdominal distension. And then, intermediate complications of a hernia surgery are seroma. Inflammatory response to mesh or suture material. So, it will cause ang uh, swelling. Okay. Seroma needs to be aspired. So, the seroma is more common after laparoscopic hernia repairs, guys. Then there can be wound infection as usually you will write all that. Pain, bleeding, wound infection and all. Everybody will write, right? Let us look at late complications of hernia surgery. Chronic pain, guys. Some people can have that. It's called as inguinodynia. Dine some pain, inguino, inguinodynia, poor people. So that's what they're explaining here, inguinodynia. Because there is injury to the nerves. Which nerves? You can injure the iliohypogastric nerve, ilioinguinal nerve, genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve. Wow, if you injure the genital nerve, what can happen? Hmm. So, they'll have dull, aching, dragging pain in the groin, genitalia, suprapubic region. They have diminished sensation, hyper or hyperesthesia. They can either have, dip so they can have less sensation or even more sensation. They can have either, okay. So, you'll have to reassure them, give a simple analgesics, nerve blocks you can give if, um, or you can give anesthetic agents, injection of uh, steroids you can give, neurolysis by inguinal exploration, neurectomy. If they have so much problem, then you have to lice the nerve, neck, remove the nerve or what? Cut the nerve, is it? Testicular atrophy can happen, guys. 
so in the injury to testicular artery okay so what will happen you will injure the artery there is not enough blood supply small testis and there's no sensation to the testis also looks like orchidectomy may be required so they're going to remove the testis what is this so did you understand guys what and all we did we look at in this video so we looked at hernio tomi isn't it hernio tomi then you saw hernio raffi under that you saw bessinis and shoulders repair then you saw hernio plasti which you saw lichenstein repair then you saw some proline mesh repair uh, uh, that is what is a darning right you saw that then you saw some biological mesh means how it will be and proline polypropylene mesh means how will it be what are the advantages disadvantages guys then you saw what else you saw the complications of hernia surgery okay so that's all for now guys bye bye